I'd like you to just allow your arms to be nice and loose. Come into the forward fold, into a forward fold and just draw a semicircle around you. So from left to right, as if you're drawing a semicircle in the sand. And then perhaps you're easing through the hips, left and right. Place the palms down nice and firm again. Again, you may need to bend your knees to do that and step. Now we're going to lead with the left leg. We're alternating the leading leg every once in a while. That's a really good idea. Draw up so you're at right angles in the front knee and the back knee. And then inhale, draw the arms up. You may already feel a stretch in the hip flexor. Exhale, take the arms behind you, draw them away, open up through the chest. Inhale, look up and then exhale, release the palms, tuck the left toes, lift up, draw your right leg so that you are now back in downward facing dog. So your first downward facing dog may usually, if you're practicing in the heat, feel a little stiffer than this. If you're enjoying a little bit of an easier first downward dog of your practice, Wriggle and work your way up and through the spine and the hips and investigate with an open mind about the changes that you have there. Lovely. Everyone take a nice inhale through the nose. And then I'd like you to exhale with a slight C sort of oceanic sound. Quite gentle. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth with that same oceanic sound. One more time, inhale through the nose. And exhale again, because they like the sound inside of the shell. Lift your gaze forward and now step your left leg forward. Let the right knee come down, untuck the back toes. Inhale, lift the arms up. Lift out of the waist, exhale, release the arms back down so that they reach to the back of the right knee. And then you can inhale, draw the fist to the heel. Lift through the torso. Squeeze an orange with the shoulder blades. Exhale, release the palms flat to the ground. Tuck the right knee. Step the legs forward into a forward fold so your feet can be hip distance apart and they certainly ought to be if you're pregnant. And then we're going to inhale and roll up to standing. Okay, let's practice and firing up a little bit more with a deeper sun salutation. Let's all be grateful for the sun. Inhale, look up, lift up, even if you find it challenging to be hot. Exhale, lower down. It provides us with so much. Inhale, halfway lift, so you can take your palms to your shins and lift your gaze. Exhale, place your palms. We're going to all step back into plank. You can modify it by bending your knees, keep your toes tucked. If you're in plank, you're going to lower down in one nice strong stick and send your heels away with you to do that. Lower down your chest if you were already in modified plank. Untuck your toes, everybody. Glue the elbows into the side of the body. Press the toes down into the mat. Look forward. Take an inhale as deep as you can, which is challenging because your rib cage is compressed. And exhale. Lower back down. So two more. Inhale, lift up. You'll notice my palms hover above the mat to prove I am not pushing through my palms. This is my lower back working. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, draw up. Hold it. Now, if you feel a pinch in your lower back, you need to release your buttocks. So just relax your glutes. Focus on your glutes and then bring yourself back to your breath. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath like this. Inhale and exhale. Place the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes and send the hips back towards the heel for an extended child's pose. Just for a moment to counteract your first back extension, spinal extension. 
Then inhale, come into downward facing dog. And exhale. This time what I'd like you to do, if you'd like to still practice with your exhale, with the oceanic sound and your mouth being open, do. Otherwise, what I'd like you to try is inhale through your nose, like normal. And then exhale, but keep that oceanic sound behind closed lips. So you may feel a sense of the area around your cheeks filling with air. Inhale through the nose. See if you can push that sensation down into the throat. You may growl a little bit here. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Oh, no, so exhale with the lips closed. Lovely. Inhale, take your gaze forward. Now you can do a little bunny hop where you bend at the knees or you can do a step so that your soles of your feet come towards your palms. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, roll all the way up. Exhale, lower the palms. Inhale, look up, lift up, exhale, forward fold, place the palms, look at your knees, draw your navel in. Inhale, draw your shoulders back as you lengthen and look up, but you keep your arms and your palms planted. So your palms could be against your shin or against the floor. Engage the core. So we're gonna step or hop, little bunny hop back into plank. Again, you can modify the plank if you like. Lower the knees. Lower down everyone. So you'd like a stick if you're in, if you were in plank. And then everyone, see if you can inhale into upward facing dog. Roll the head with the shoulders back. Keep the ankles drawing together. Lift the knees and the thighs. Drape the rib cage. Then exhale. Roll back over your toes and come into downward facing dog. Inhale through the nose. How is your breath? Please, can you allow yourselves to read the information from your breath? Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Is it smooth or choppy? Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, take a look towards your palms. Bend your knees. If you're going to take the bunny hop, keep your hips high. Otherwise, step to the front of the mat or float. Your soles are close to your palms as you inhale. Halfway lift. Remember, you can use your palms to your shins if you like. You're just extending your spine nice and long. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, draw up to Tadasana. Lift the arms up and the gaze follows. Exhale, let the arms come down by the side. And take a moment to tune in with the Tadasana and how it's different from the start, if you were here with us for that. Okay. <laughs> I had a big glass of water before and actually that is never a good idea. You fill your belly with liquid. <laughs> So please excuse me. Lovely. So we're going to carry on now and we're going to come into chair pose. So uh, great for your thighs. I'd like you to, if you're pregnant, make sure that your feet are hip width apart. Otherwise, glue your legs together, your ankles, your knees, your thighs. Inhale, draw up and feel nice and long, heavy through the feet. Make sure the four corners of the feet are nicely planted and then Keep your gaze forward as you exhale and come to sit down. So you can stick your bottoms out if you like. Check in that your knees are drawn back far enough for you to be able to see your toes. So don't put, shove your knees too far forward, draw them back. Yes, it's an extra challenge to uh, your stability. That's what it's all about today. So hold it there for a moment and then bring your palms out in front of you. So the palms face each other, draw them together into Anjali Mudra and take the fingertips pointing up to your chin to your chest. We're going into a twist. So we'll do this gently 
And if it gets too much, you can come back to the center or simply Tadasana, have a rest and pick up where you can. So we're going to take the right elbow to the outside edge of the left knee. Now you can use the force of your left knee to really encourage you into that twist. Take the gaze over to the side. If this is nice for you and open, you can place your right palm down and inhale, blossom the left arm up, if it feels nice. Just check back in with your knees that they are still level with each other. It's probably quite tempting for your right knee to follow, to draw back as your right hip might be tempted to draw back. This is not a twist in your hips, it's a twist in your spine. So Work towards drawing your right hip forward so that your knees remain level. Okay. Keep, keep your right hand where it, uh, keep your right hand against your knee. Place the left palm on the outer edge of the left hip to give you a sense of stability as you step back into a high lunge. So you can have, sorry, low lunge. You can lower your knee here. Maybe we all ought to lower our knees. Tuck the toe so you feel a nice stretch through the toe mound. And then see how you're doing with your twist today. So if twisting is not feeling like a good option for you today, you can do this posture in a symmetrical sense, or you can really bring your torso up and just bring your right, the back of the right palm to the outer edge of the left knee, keeping the torso lifted. Otherwise, you can have the palm down to the ground. If you're enjoying this and you feel up for a challenge, you can lift up off the back knee and inhale again. Blossom up the left arm and take the gaze up there too. And just check where you are with your hips. Are they in line with your crown? If your back leg is lifted, make sure it's straight and strong. Where's your breath? Come back to your breath. Smooth it out. Maybe lift up your toes to release any grip. Lovely. Exhale now and release both palms to the either side of your front foot and step your stance a little bit shorter so your back leg comes a bit shorter. Your front heel is in line with the instep of the back foot and we straighten up through the front knee. Do you recognize this stance? We're going into triangle pose. Find where you usually connect with your uh, forward leg. So it could be on your wrist, it could be on the shin or on the thigh. You could be in yogi toe grip. Inhale, take the right palm and blossom the right hip open as you lift up and you find that tension between leaning down and drawing up. Bring your focus to the front knee as it's straight. Draw up through the kneecap. As you inhale, inhale up the corners of the earth. And as you exhale, release the heat on your bodies. If you're sweating, that's wonderful. The sweat will cool you down. Inhale, that means you're doing what you need to do. Exhale. One more breath here. Inhale. And then exhale. Lower that right palm down to the right hip once again. Now we're going to come into half moon posture, which is one of the first postures that's going to bring us through this sense of lift, equilibrium, perhaps a little sense of challenge. So you bring your focus to your front leg with a bent front knee, place some weight in your palm about 20 centimeters and maybe slightly to the left of your Sole, your, your left sole of your foot. 
You can come up onto the tripod of your fingertips to give yourselves an extra lift. If you have a prop around that you would like to use, like the back of the chair, and you still want to get yourself into the sensation of the posture, that is adapting, okay? That's resilient. That's the frame of mind we want to cultivate. So good for you. Wherever you are with your half moon, see if you can flex your toes back towards your knee of your right leg. And then maybe finally, you want to lift the right arm, draw the right shoulder back and take the gaze up to the right fingertips. Do you feel weightless? Are you flying? You have that same thing that you have in triangle pose of leaning down but drawing up. So those opposing forces, your obliques are in action, especially your left waist. Now we're gonna lower that back leg down, lower the back arm down to the, to the waist. Keep a 90 degree bend in the front leg and come into warrior two, like nothing happened. Land like a bird in your nature. Perhaps just ease through the front knee a little bit, that standing leg may be feeling a little bit of the pressure of that balance and then come into a more static warrior two pose. You'll never be completely still though, will you? Check that your back arm is level with the mat. Take the gaze over the fingertips. And exhale, so the drishti point. You're a warrior about to go to war. What are you looking at? Who? Our enemies can be inside ourselves. They can be outside ourselves. Perhaps we project the enemies inside ourselves onto other people so we can objectify them and conquer them. Inhale, one last time. Exhale, cartwheel the palms down to the floor, rotate your back foot so you can lower your knees and bring your knees together. And we're just gonna come into a really nice child's pose. So have a rest. If you can't get your forehead to the ground, that's absolutely fine. But do try and make a prop, I often say this, so that you can just really relax your neck and your jaw and your tongue and your breath. Now, if your thoughts are louder than your breath, you need to let your ego be interrupted by that essential mechanism. The inhalations and the exhalations. Park your thoughts and focus on the breath. Can you slightly extend your exhalation? Or to say if you're pregnant, you maybe know, but have your knees wide in a wide leg child's pose. Can be more comfortable for people with a larger chest. So hopefully you feel your pulse is steadying and your body temperature is regulating here. You may feel a little bit more blood come to the head and the chest. So when there's more blood in the chest area, there's some receptors there which um, trigger your blood pressure to regulate itself better and your pulse. So this is such a healthy place to be. Lovely. Take your hands out. Now we're just going to stretch into a downward facing dog. And yes, we are going to repeat that sequence on the opposite side. So walk forwards into a forward fold. Again, if you're pregnant, feet are hip width apart, otherwise bring them together. Inhale, long spine, exhale, sit down into your chair. Inhale, draw the arms forward, the palms come together. And this time you're taking the left elbow to the outer edge of the right knee. Take your gaze over to the right. Inhale here, and if you want to, you can exhale and blossom into a deeper 
extension of the twist. If the depth of the elbow hooking over the knee is uncomfortable, again, come back to an adaptation and just take the outer edge of the palm to the outer edge of the opposite knee. You can work on keeping the palms together. Then you can check in on your alignment. How are your toes doing? Can you still see them? Are your knees aligned? So wherever you are, enjoy the squeeze as the blood is squeezed into those internal organs and the waste products are squeezed out. Okay, so now we're going to step back into that low lunge. You can lower, let's all lower the back knee down. Place the right palm to the left palm to the outer edge of the right foot if it's available to you. And then you're keeping your torso quite low and you can inhale and span up. Otherwise, you can lift your torso and come into a twist with your palm to the outer edge of the knee. If you, if you like to, you can involve the right hand and wrap it round and try and find your left hip. If you want the extra challenge, you can lift the knee off the ground. Send the heel away from you, keep the knee, the back leg nice and straight. Look up and try and get the fingertips in line with the ear if your arm is lifted. Come back to the breath. And then we're going to soften down. So take the gaze low to begin with. And then bring the palms either side of the front foot. Bring your torso back straight so that you're looking towards the short front end of your mat. Now hop your back foot a little bit closer towards your front foot. The, the front heel in line with the back instep. Straighten the front leg. So that is the important part. I don't mind where your palm is. So you decide where you put your palm as we come into Trikonasana. Just let your left palm stroke your left hip open so that you really get the sense that you're trying to stack your left hip on top of your right hip. And then inhale, blossom up, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Chin in with the obliques. So the areas where you may be getting creases in your t-shirt as you bend over on the right waist. See if you can draw those creases up towards the ceiling. Can you feel how that changes in the hips? Lovely. Keep that sense of lifting and diving. Draw the cool breath in through the soles of the feet. You know what's coming next, it's half moon. What are you gonna do? You're gonna let your breath quicken and build fear. Or are you gonna slow your breath and encourage yourselves? Are we gonna encourage ourselves that everything's gonna be okay and you can adapt and you will survive? <laughs> Lower your gaze down to your, part, to your feet and let the left palm come to the left hip. Just bend softly through the front leg, place the right palm in front of your front toes and hop your stance a little bit shorter until you feel there's no weight on your back foot at all. And it very simply is if there's a balloon, a helium balloon tied around your ankle, you just let that leg float up behind you. And then we come to alignment. So perhaps you want to spin your left hip open just like we do in Trikonasana. Perhaps you want to focus on drawing your standing leg straight. Perhaps you're into all about the flourishes today. So you're gonna check in that your toes are flexed and drawing towards your left knee. See if you can draw your left shoulder back, stack it above your right, and your palm faces up. Wherever you are, whatever support you're using, the focus is on that back leg being weightless. Five. If you fall in, out, smile, come back in, awesome. Four, three, lift that leg a little higher. There, you didn't know you could do that, did you? Two, one, like nothing happened, gracefully place that back leg down. 90 degree bend in the front leg, inhale the torso up, and perhaps just work through 
that front knee a little bit. So you're oiling the joint of the knee, getting a little bit of that lactic acid buildup redistributed. That is not what we're aiming for. We don't want to create tension. We want to expel it. Lovely. Inhale, draw the arms up. And again, find your drishti, find your focus point. Make sure that the back edge of your back foot is pressing down into the mat. That will strengthen your front knee, front, your back leg. And the arms are parallel to the ground. So come back to your breath. What's it saying? It's probably regulating after that inversion. Draw your waist, your right waist backwards. So don't let your torso lean forward. See if you can draw your head over your midline a little bit. Perhaps sink into your hips slightly more. Inhale through the soles of your feet. Breathe out the corners of the earth. And exhale, let any extra heat you don't need out. One more breath like this, inhale. And exhale. Release the palms and just hop or step so that your feet come to meet at the front of the mat. So if you are feeling like you would like a little bit of extra reassurance today in your standing postures, your standing um, one-legged postures, you may want a chair. Otherwise, I would recommend that the drishti point is almost as good as a chair. So that is your focus point. A bit like climbers need ropes, yogis need drishtis. They hold you up. There are a point that's not moving, a point that's directly in front of you, and so your gaze is, um, is directly in front of you. And it's not so much what you look at, but the intensity with which you look at it that keeps you up. Now we're going to move through three movements on each side. So your standing leg is going to hold um, a position where your leg is in front of you, where it's to the side of you, and then when you cross over your body. So those three different movements, all on one leg. Okay, so it's quite intense on that standing leg. I want you to notice whether you're bending that standing leg. If you are, take an easier option for yourselves. If you want to, there is a challenge for everybody here. You can extend your leg. So if you get your tea towel and hook it over your foot, you can then practice by holding the strap, having the leg straight. So you push through the heel, just like we do in plank. You push the heel away from you. And then you can get the sense of an extended leg. It's quite good on the hamstrings. There's absolutely no pressure to practice either posture, either way. You choose what's right for you, of course. So let's take the feet together. Close your eyes for a moment. Check in with the four corners of the feet. Inhale. Exhale out any part of what I just said that freed you. <laughs> okay, inhale, bend the right knee and draw it up into your armpit, into your right armpit. Now take your focus to your left standing leg. Is your left hip drawing backwards? Try and draw your left and your right hip so that they are equal with each other, both of them pointing straight forwards. And then your kneecap draws up so that that standing leg is straight. Can you focus now on your drishti? So your drishti keeps you up and so does your breath. Inhale and feel your rib cage lift you out of your pelvis, almost out of the floor. Exhale, let the shoulders relax down the back. Now if you want to, you can come in to extend your leg here. So I would recommend that you take the strap in the right hand inhale exhale see if you can draw your toes towards you if your leg is extended inhale exhale how's that standing leg doing inhale 
and exhale. Now we're going to take the leg or the knee over to the side. Your drishti point is going to change. Your drishti point is now to your left hand side. So sorry, your leg is going to the right and your drishti is to the left. See if you can draw your hips level with each other. So if your leg is extended, I'm not asking you to go high. I want you to more think about extending out 90 degrees so that your hips can remain even. So draw your inner thighs together to get that sense. If you're not extending the leg, you can do the same or take the palm, the fingertips, the inside of the knee. Perhaps test what it's like flexing and extending the toes. Find the breath and then everyone come back to the center. So here, if you're sticking with the knee bent, draw it a little bit closer to you with both hands and then leave only your left hand over your knee. We're going to all, if your leg is extended, you're going to take the tea towel, the strap in the left hand. So you're slightly going across your body because we're going to twist the torso. So wherever you are, inhale the right arm shoulder height and draw it back so it's pointing behind you. And see if you can take the gaze behind you. If not, simply allow the right palm to settle the right hip down. Hold it. We're gonna come out together and really gracefully, as gracefully as we came in. Bring the gaze back to the front. Release the foot if you had it held in the strap. Draw the knee into the chest and then let it down. That's the top of the mountain. Have a little wiggle and a jiggle. Oh, Ooh, legs. <laughs> yeah, we need to do that, don't we? <laughs> Lovely, okay. <sighs> Perhaps we even take a nice wide leg stance and just fold over forward. So try and keep a nice flat back. And we're just gonna take a little twist to juice up through the hips again. So take the right hand over to the left side and then inhale, draw your left hand up and back and look up. That feels nice to me. I hope it feels nice to you. And then exhale, come back to the center and inhale, draw up. Now, because it's hot, we don't need to be dynamic. If you'd like to um, hold that for a bit longer, you can. Or if you feel like you do need to get a little bit more into those stiff joints, then you can just cross over. Inhale, lift up, look up. Exhale, cross the arms over the opposite side and swish the opposite arm up. Lovely. Let's all come back to the center and walk the feet close together again as we come into the other side. So this time we're going to be taking the weight into the right leg. Inhale, draw that left knee into the chest. Straighten the right leg and find your drishti. Hold it there. Extend the leg if you choose to do so. Right palm comes to the right hip. See if you can tilt your pelvis so if it was a bowl holding water, nothing is spilling out. Your drishti point will hold you up and so will your breath. So slow your breath, be in command. Push the heel away from you in both legs. Draw the kneecap towards you in both legs if your, feet, if your legs are extended. Okay, let's extend out to the side. So the drishti moves over the right shoulder. Think about drawing the inner thighs together so that your leg isn't lifting up and your hips are stable. And if your knee is bent, you can focus on that too. Lovely. Inhale, draw the leg or the knee back to the center. And if your leg is extended, swap over your hands. Check in with your standing leg that's nice and straight. If your knee is bent, place your right palm to the outer edge of your left knee. Then everyone, extend your left arm, shoulder height, so the fingertips are pointing 
behind you and let your gaze follow. Nice and strong in the navel. Fingertip at the point is, is lower, thumb on top. Check in with the standing leg. And then inhale, draw the gaze to the front first, and then untwist. Everybody draw that left knee up into the armpit, and then gracefully release. Fabulous. So we're also going to come into a wide leg stance, but this time it's seated. So just choose a width that's right for you. It doesn't have to be over-exaggerated. We just want to make sure that we're going to get into the groin. Knees pointing upwards. And before we take the stretch any deeper, we're just going to check in with our necks. A lot of tension held there. So the right palm comes over to the left ear. Fingertips pointing down. Maybe extend your left arm out to the side. So imagine that you've got a shopping bag in that left hand and it just drops the shoulder down. And if you don't instantly find any places of tension, then with curiosity, Tilt the chin slightly towards the chest and search for it. If you get there, come back to the breath. Or when you get there, come back to the breath and see about releasing and easing some of that tension out. Nice chance to catch our breath. Okay, so then take your right palm and actually pop it on your right ear. Let your head come upright and spread your um, left arm away from you and come into a crescent moon stretch so that left arm reaches up. And you can take the gaze to the armpits, the fingertips, or if your neck prefers it, down to the floor. Inhale back up to centre. And then lift your torso out of your pelvis, okay? So you feel your sit bones ground down into that core earth, but your torso with all that heat is lifting up. And then you're gonna walk your palms forwards. So you tilt from your pelvis. You're now allowed to spill that liquid, whatever it is, onto the floor. So just think about lengthening your front body rather than rounding your back. We want to feel like you have a long spine, so you may not go very low. You may hover here. Keep your fingertips active and your gaze about a meter of the floor in front of you. Inhale, lengthen the back, lift out the pelvis. Exhale. Now, if you want to, you can start to lower yourself down a little bit more. So I've lowered my forearms. Inhale. Oh, it's nice in the heat, isn't it? And exhale, so much less resistance. And wherever you are, just pad yourself back up to seating as we take our investigations in our neck to the opposite side. So the left palm comes over the left ear, fingertips down towards the right shoulder, sorry, left palm to the right ear. And then get in there. Let that right shoulder heavy down. So all the time, my toes are drawing back towards my knees. My legs are quite active. Are you in there? Lovely, release the palm, draw the head back up with the left hand. And then we're going to Extend the right hand away as we come into that crescent shape on the opposite side. So you, you may be able to come down onto your forearm. You may prefer to be a bit more upright and feel grounded equally through both sit bones. So see what you'd like today. And where your neck wants to be. Looking at your fingertips, your armpit or the floor. And then come back up to center. So we're going to need that tea towel again. We're going to lie back. Just come into an easy resting pose for a moment as you watch me demonstrate. We're going to do a very similar thing with the leg. So again, if you prefer, you can simply have your knee into your chest, but I hope this is a bit more accessible because 
You can keep your knee bent by the way, or you can extend it out as if you're standing. But because you're lying down, you've taken away the sense of um, having to negotiate with gravity. So with your leg extended, your heel extends upwards and your toes extend towards you. First of all, we're going to let the leg come out to the side, just like we did standing. Then we're going to swap over the grip in the strap. And at this point, you have to extend your leg and you're going to bring your leg over to the opposite side. So you've got a twist in your lower back. And then the final part of that sequence, we're gonna bend the knees right up, both knees, stay in the twist, and bring them right up towards the chest. We come back to the, um, our backs and then we do the other side. So time is running on a bit and I hope we can do this at a leisurely pace. And if you need to wind down, just be aware, I think there's about eight minutes until half past. If you have, are on a short time, then I recommend that you, um, perhaps come into a closing sequence of your own. Perhaps you want to practice an inversion with both legs in the air at the same time, and then a twist either side and a shavasana. But if you've got time to stick with me, then please do. So you have your right leg in the air with your strap. Plant your left palm to your left hip, and then allow your right leg to fall over to the side. See if you can get your upper arm and your elbow down to the floor. And then you have a bit more command over that sense of extending, externally rotating through the hip. I find I get a better range of motion when my left leg is extended along the floor, but it's very tempting for that left hip to peel up. So there's actually quite a bit of pressure from the left palm through the left hip. Then lift up your shoulders and just draw them down towards your um, hips. So they're a little bit further down the mat and make sure that your left shoulder is planted, gaze in the left direction. This is really good through the groin, pretty good for the hamstrings. And what else is going on inside? Inhale, draw that leg up and then swap over the hands. We come into the twist. So now your right arm extends to the height of your right shoulder, your gaze over to the right. Your right hip can absolutely peel off the floor now, so it's not the same as the previous posture where the left hip was grounded. The right hip can totally peel up. Take a few nice deep belly breaths. Release the strap and bend both knees so your right knee will be on top of your left knee and it can feel quite nice to bend your left elbow and place your left palm on the outer edge of your right thigh, just heavy down through the legs there. Keep the gaze nice and soft over the right shoulder. At the base of your next exhalation, just let the air compress out of the lungs and then inhale, activate both knees and draw them up towards the chest. Just give yourselves a nice grateful press and squeeze, perhaps lift your chin so that your head comes off the mat and you feel a release through your lower spine as you neutralize it. And then we practice this in the opposite orientation, so this time you place the strap over the left ball of the foot. The right palm comes to the right hip. First of all, gaze is upward just to connect with your heel. So the outer edge of your leg, the back of your leg is really active and open. And then you take the left, the left leg over to the left side and the gaze over to the right. So pressing down that right hip into the ground. There's a lot of weight to lever it off the ground. So again, I'm gonna extend my right leg out, keep my right leg active, so knee is pressing into the ground. And let gravity do its thing, allow it. Keep your right shoulder grounded. Soften your breath in your belly. Your breath, okay. Inhale and draw that leg up and swap over the strap and let the left leg come over to the right side. Extend the left palm out facing up 
and absolutely see that left hip just lifts off the mat. If it's a bit stiff there, what you could do is bend the right knee already up and that will ease through the lower back. So it increases the stretch if you have your right leg extended. So find a, find a place on the scale that's right for you, right for your practice. Thank you everyone who's able to stick with us. We ran over a little bit at the start, so I'm really grateful that you're here now. Okay. And then you can release the strap and draw both knees up towards the chest. Aim for your knees to be higher than your hips. And then maybe bend your right elbow and place your right palm on top of your left hip. So after quite a lot of floating and standing and equilibrium on one leg. Hopefully we're moving into a sensation of groundedness now, these oppositions. As you feel the coolness of the earth and perhaps you can even hear things through the floor, neighbors or the street outside. So definitely allow yourselves to heavy a little bit more here. Gorgeous. At the base of your next exhalation, again, empty the lungs and engage the diaphragm, engage the core so that you can bring yourself back with your knees up towards your chest. This time, bring both knees in towards the armpits so you have a little bit more width in your posture. And perhaps you want to move into happy baby pose. So extend both arms inside your knees and take the outer edge of your feet and just rock and roll left and right. Again, it releases the lower back. And then I'd like you to extend your legs forwards. And if you are feeling cool, which is like, it's still possible because the sweat on your body is perhaps is, is really cooling your core temperature down. So if you have been practicing in the heat, it may still be wise to add another layer if you're planning on a nice shavasana. Let your legs come as wide as the mat. Now, just before we settle into Shavasana, we're going to practice with a little bit of coordination of the breath and the movements and very slight adjustments. So I'd like you to have your left palm facing up and conversely, your right palm facing down. So inhale and take your gaze to your left palm and exhale. Then inhale, switch your gaze to the opposite side and have your right palm now flip up and your left palm flip down. Inhale. And exhale. And repeat, inhale, swap over the gaze, swap over the palms. So you have this ripple effect. Exhale, and then perhaps inhale, move already. Exhale, use the inhalation to move. Inhale. And then exhale, take the gaze up to center. And you can come into your Shavasana. So, Another option for today is a prone shavasana, so you could be lying on your stomach instead. Okay, that's a really nice way to feel fully grounded through the front seams of the body. Quite an unusual feeling to take a shavasana like this. So if you're feeling curious, come and join me. So your shoulders, they're heavying forwards and your hips are heavying down, and your belly still rises and falls. It's the front of the body with its contact on the mat that feels that nice connection with the earth. So your cheek can be to the left or the right. You can even make a, a little pillow with your palms. So here, instead of your toes falling outwards, your toes come together and your heels fall outwards. If you are very hot, 
let your arms come a little bit further away from your body just so that your body can expire, you know, just let everything out a little bit. The heat can raise away from you a bit more easily. Just come back to that concept of opposing forces or opposites. And I'd like you to now start to think about inside and outside. So identify a few external sounds or sensations. Allow your focus to take a moment to really acknowledge them. Now what's interesting is if you've got your cheek on the mat, you've got your ear on the mat and you can really pick up different things, both externally and internally. So whether you're in prone Shavasana or the regular Shavasana, we we're going to start to take that focus internally. So beyond that physical external presence. And as you inhale, I'd like you to think of that breath simply billowing through your body. So you inhale and that breath just bristles and opens up the limbs, the insides of the limbs. And then as you exhale, focus back on returning to the core and you're gathering light and heat in the core. Inhale and expand your focus to the internal the cylinders of the limbs and then exhale, gather back into the center. Inhale and let the air really flourish through all the internal organs. Exhale, let everything gather in the center. Bring your focus right to the navel. The very first connections we have are that navel, that, that umbilical cord. We feel so much in our stomachs, our gut instincts tell us so much. So when you tune into your parasympathetic nervous system, you're also much more able to read your instincts because you are opening that nerve, the vagus nerve, which goes right into the gut, which reads what's going on in your bellies. Allow yourselves a few glorious moments connecting with what's going on inside of you. Now we're going to come out, if you're in prone Shavasana, we're going to come out slightly differently, obviously, but let's all, whichever Shavasana you're in, which, let's all bring the arms up over the head and extend the legs away from us. So we're really stretching through the body. If you're in prone Shavasana, I'd like you to move your arms so that either side of the mat and just let your legs come wide again, push up into a little sphinx. So you just loosen through your lower back here, wobble left and right so your glutes are not tensing at all and just enjoy this little flexion uh, extension in the back. If you're on your backs, draw your knees into the chest and perhaps lift your head and neck off the mat so you are rounding through the back. Lovely. If you're in Sphinx, you're going to push back into a little child's pose. And if you're on your back, roll over to one side. And then everyone, we're going to come up to seated and do our three breaths together before we finish. So if you come up slowly and blink your eyes gently open so that the external, what you're taking in from around you, feels as if 
it is coming back bit by bit rather than overwhelming the senses. So you have a sense of equilibrium between the strength of what you're aware of inside of you and what you're aware of outside of you. You're kind of building that sense of harmony of you in your space. So if you come into whatever seated position suits you best, draw the palms to the chest, together in Anjali Asana, Anjali Mudra, pardon me. Take a moment and exhale any stale air from, from the mouth. Inhale, span the arms up, look up. Exhale down through the midline. Inhale, draw the navel in, up, lift up, look up. Exhale, draw down through the midline. One last breath all together. Let's feel connected. Inhale. And exhale. Take a moment. Feel what's different. Have an amazing week and thank you so much. I'm just going to stop the recording. If anyone wants to stop and ask any questions and uh, offer any feedback or just say hi, that would be marvellous.